Hey guys, here today I'm going to be showing you how to make hypnotic hard techno like planetary assault systems. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI presets, all of that from this video, right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So, we're at 130 BPM. The first sound that we have here is this lead. So the way this lead is made is actually using FM synthesis and then combining that with grain delay to make this kind of interesting sort of metallic atmospheric sound. Now, the first thing that's happening here are the notes, and I think this is important to show you. These notes are really simple. As you can see, it's only two notes. It's F and then B, which is six notes up. So I chose these two notes pretty much just because of the interval between them. Like, let's pull these up on a piano really quick, and I'll show you. You can see the interval between the two notes has this sort of like just very dark hypnotic feel. It's whenever you have a note six notes up from whatever your root note is, it just has that kind of feel. So I was just kind of playing off of that. And then we just have two notes, you know? The key with these kinds of leads and these kinds of, I guess you could call this a melody, is that you can't really have too many notes going on because there's a lot happening in the synth. Between the FM synthesis and then all the stuff that's happening with the grain delay here, even like with just all the echo and reverb that we have, if you have too many notes, it's just going to be too much and it's going to be too busy. But if you can kind of limit it to two two maybe three notes a lot of times even just one note will work as well it's gonna fit a lot better because again the idea here is simple notes complicated synth stuff so yeah those are the notes and then those are also just playing you can hear like kind of off of it's like on the 16th note so it has this very like just bouncy feel already because of that. That's definitely contributing to a big part of how this sound is working. But the synth patch for this sound looks like this. So this is actually just FM synthesis with three sine waves. Pretty simple, you can see they're all at like pretty close octaves. The thing that makes this one a bit different with the FM is the detuning here. You can see I have the fine tune turned up. So if I turn this back to the default setting, here's what it sounds like. You can hear it's a lot more straightforward, like, obviously, I'll turn the grain delay off in this chorus. You know, that's a little bit more straight up, but then when we put this back to where it was, that's how you really get that, like, dark, kind of spooky, metallic overtone. And then what's happening here is I have this going into a filter, which has an envelope on it, so here's without the filter. And with it, you can hear the filter just kind of makes it a bit more plucky, you know, I wanted this to have a little bit more attack to it. Then we have the grain delay. So what's happening with this grain delay is you can see I have it on eighth notes. That's what this two setting is here. I know it's a little bit confusing. But yeah, we've got it on eighth notes and then you can see the dry wet's up pretty high. And what's happening here is I have the pitch on plus two. And then we have the feedback up, and then I played with the spray and the frequency settings as well. And so it's just creating this sort of like dissonant metallic thing in the background. I'll turn up the dry wet all the way so you can hear. So basically, this is just playing in the background. Behind our main synth. And yeah, it's a really cool way to create these kind of hypnotic textures over top of your synths like this. Because in the track, you're still mostly just getting the two notes like I described. But you're just hearing this like world of sound around it. 
And it's great with this too because it's not just creating a bunch of random noise, but it's rhythmic because it's delay and it's doing eighth notes. So we're still kind of hearing it like fit really well into the beat and it's all working together to create this one thing and this is really the thing with these sounds is it's not going to be like just the notes or just the synth patch but it's the notes combined with the synth patch combined with the way that the effects are kind of making it all fit together to make this complex this complex synth that's still pretty simple and yeah then we have this chorus which I'm using this I've got the feedback up all the way so I'm going to turn off all of these actually we'll just keep those on but let me just turn off everything except for the chorus so that you can hear so the chorus is not actually really doing chorus in the traditional sense it's kind of just adding this metallic overtone here's without it and then with it so I actually learned this technique from Zenworld shout out to Zenworld dude if you're watching this but uh, I turned the feedback all the way up well almost yeah that's all the way up and then it just creates this kind of thing and so now we have even more movement because you can hear this is like swirling around. I have a pretty slow rate, so we're just getting this like swirly metallic thing. So then here's just the grain delay. And then grain delay with the chorus. So you see how it's all working together. Then after that we have just an echo and reverb, so these are just giving it a bit of space, I like got ping pong delay on the echo. And then we just have some drum bus, which is fattening the sound up. Here's without it. And with it you can hear it makes it kind of, you know, a bit darker sounding, but also just a bit fatter and stronger in the mix. And then finally I have a high pass filter just to cut out the low end and make sure there's no like weird low end being created by any of these effects. Sometimes when you have that high feedback on the chorus, it can create that, but cutting it out at the end solves that problem. And yeah, that's it for the lead. After that, we have the second lead, which sounds like this. So as you can hear, this lead is really high in pitch. This is playing actually C and F sharp. So these notes are technically A little bit out of key with that first lead, but this is meant to just kind of create a little bit of a background kind of texture. And again, it's not really doing a whole lot in the mix. Like, it is adding a lot in terms of the high end, but it's very small. So I'll show you what happens. Here is without the lead, without the second lead. And then with it. that's what it's doing it's just adding that like doo, 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 kind of thing that you're hearing that honestly I think it just sounds like if you don't know what you're hearing it might just sound like it's part of the main lead if you're like really analyzing you know this is really a background element but you hear how much these little details like this matter so this again it's just adding like some complexity to it something kind of playing off of that main lead because if we just have the main lead yeah, it's a bit straightforward. But I think this is the perfect background element to really, like, bring it to life. And this is also part of why I have it pitched up so high. You know, this isn't meant to sound that cool on its own. It's not meant to be the kind of layer where you solo it and you're thinking, like, wow, this is such a cool synth patch. I do think it's an interesting synth patch for some reasons, but it's not, like, you know, the kind of thing where this would be, like, in the demo of a preset pack. But... That's the point, is that it only, it serves a function in the track. It's not about sounding cool on its own. It's about how everything comes together. And so that's what I was thinking when I made this. And because it's pitched so high, that's what makes it fit so well. You can see if I pitch it down a bit, you know, it might sound a little bit cooler. On its own. But then if we play that with the other one. All of a sudden it becomes a mess. So you really have to think about that. Again, like. You know, just making a little sound like this, just to kind of fit into the high end. So yeah, so this is just one saw wave here in analog with a bit of a low pass filter. The low pass has an envelope, which is making it plucky. We've got the amp envelope set like that. Then I have this vibrato, which the vibrato is really fast. So let me pinch this down actually so you can kind of hear what's going on. I'll turn it up. 
<laughs> it's just like really, really fast vibrato like this, and then I just have a really low amount of it. And then we just have a ton of unison as well to give it. You heard it, like it has that really buzzy, kind of hard techno, sort of super saw. And yeah, then we just have this echo doing quarter notes, a bit of drum bus to fatten it up, and then finally I side chained it a little bit to the main kick too. And yeah, that's it for that second lead. And there's another thing with this too where I could even kind of see it as like a percussive element. You know, a lot of times in these tracks, like you'll hear like kind of some sort of modular synth percussion or something like this that sounds really metallic like this. And it won't always have a lot of attack, but it'll have like just kind of a cool texture like that. So you could even look at this as like some percussion or something rhythmic that just happens to fit in melodically as well. But yeah, that's it for the second lead. Then from there we have the bass, which sounds like this. So this is just a standard rolling bass. It's just playing F and then, yeah, it's just 16th notes. You know, some people would even call this like the side trance bass or whatever, but this is just meant to be like one strong, fat bass note that fills out the low end nicely without just being like a rumble kick. You know, for one, I'm trying to show you guys more interesting techniques than just dropping on a reverb and a distortion and a filter and side chaining it and calling it a day. And also, you know, when I was listening to Planetary Assault System tracks, he does use a lot of interesting different basses, and especially this style of techno, there's a lot of room to try different stuff. So, you know, don't be afraid to try something like this, even if you think it is like a side trance bass, or, you know, maybe you could do something kind of like this too. You know, the dun, dun, dun type of bass. Just try different things because it doesn't always have to be a rumble bass. You can use interesting stuff like this. And then for the synth on this one, it's just this patch, which is two saw waves you can see here. I like stacking two, even if it's kind of just the same thing. It does make it a bit fatter. Um, that's a good tip for when you're trying to make like fat, low, subby basses like this. Then we have those going into a low pass filter. I've got a bit of an envelope on that. So that's making it have that like kind of like plucky sound. We get the amp envelope set in a very similar way. Then we just have a bit of drum bus and a compressor side chaining it to the kick. You know, that's what gives it the rhythm because if it was not being side chained, it wouldn't really work that well. It would just be da 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 da. But with the side chain, you get more of a, you get more nuance because it's like da 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 da. It kind of like fades into the note. Oh yeah, that's it for the bass. Like I said, really simple, you know, I think it's important to make something that just works with very little processing and without a whole lot of extra stuff, you know? This is just like a simple one note bass line, a very fat synth, and you don't really need to do a whole lot extra. If you're having to do too much to change the sound, to make it really fat and make it really full, and I'm guilty of this as well, you guys. I've definitely seen in my older videos. I think it's, you should kind of just rethink it and maybe try and see. Maybe you can make your synth patch simpler. Or maybe you could like go to the root instead of trying to add a bunch of stuff afterwards. But yeah, so really simple bass. And then we just have the kick, which sounds like this. So yeah, this is just a fat 909 kick. You can see I labeled the key on this one. It's tuned to F. I didn't change the transposition or anything. That is just the key of this kick. Yeah, it's important to keep your kick and bass and in key with each other. You know, the bass is playing F, the kick is playing F, and they're gonna fit really nicely. If I put the kick up to F sharp, like if we put it up plus one, check out what happens. I'll, I'll low pass it too so you can like really hear what's happening. See how the low end sounds like, it's almost like, it's not really that fat, but then watch what happens when we put them back in key. See how when they're in key together, it's fatter than when they're out of key? This is because you just get weird stuff happening when you have two bass notes playing at the same time at two different notes that are like one or two or even three or four semitones away from each other. But if you make sure your kick and bass are in key, you know, both your kick and bass will always sound better in the track. And yeah, just like I said, just like a simple 909 kick works really well for this style. That's really the root of like a lot of techno kicks. 
And yeah, it fits really well here. You can also see I shortened this one. And then I just have a little bit of drum bus on that. And then I put the kick and bass in a group together as well. This is a technique known as bussing. You know, it just really helps to make it as full and as big as possible. I just have a little bit of saturation on here. You don't need a whole lot. But here's without it. And then I'll turn it on and you can see why it's important. So without it. And then with it. So you hear how the whole low end just really starts to come together? Just by turning on the saturator. It's like, it's, I feel like it's kind of filling in the space between the kick and bass and really gluing them together and making your whole low end a lot more cohesive and a lot tighter in the track. So yeah. And then the last thing we have here are the hi-hats, which sound like this. So the first I had is the main one, which is this one. So this is the one that you hear on the upbeats. And the thing that I noticed when I was checking out a lot of these tracks is that typically this hi-hat and really all the hi-hats aren't going to be that long. Like it's usually a pretty short kind of like sample. It's not going to be like a long like like sometimes in other styles of techno you would want a longer hi-hat. But I think here you just want this quick like And then if you'll notice one of the hi-hats in here, this one, there's two layers. It's this layer and then this layer, which you can hear this one's for the high end and this is the mid-range. But this one also has kind of like a tone to it. It has like that, no. I think that's a note. But you can hear it in there and that's something I also noticed. It kind of helps us stand out because you're hearing this in the mix. You're like. It would be one thing if you were just hearing the highs and some mid-range come like the tsh, but then you're also hearing that over top of it. And I think it really makes it stand out in the mix and it's adding a layer of depth. So it's important to find a hi-hat that has that tone to it. And yeah, and then I just have those going through a bit of reverb and a bit of drum bust to fatten it up. And that also helps to kind of make them just turn into one hi-hat and glue them together. And yeah, and then the next one is this one, which is just playing, you know, straight 16th notes. So this is just this hi-hat. You can see I shortened it a little bit because I think it was more of a shaker. And I made it have more attack like that. I shortened it with the amplitude envelope as well. Again, we really don't want longer hi-hats. Like, you know, maybe sometimes I would even use this as my hi-hat that's playing the 16th notes. But in this case, we just want this little short, tight hi-hat like this. I've got it going through some drum bus. And then the last one is this one. And what this is, is it's just playing, it's actually playing on the same counts as that first lead. If you notice, they're playing at the same time. But what this is doing is it's every other 16th note. So it's kind of accentuating this one. We have like... It's just providing this like kind of stereo, interesting layer to the main 16th note hi-hat. That really brings the hi-hats to life. This is a great way to kind of make them stand out and make it not just be the same old Because like, you know, that's kind of easy to do. But if you add something like this, it's adding depth and really bringing the track to life. And I've heard a lot of techno producers use this as well. I originally saw this in this one Weba masterclass, I think it was. And he was doing this in one of his tracks and it like blew me away. And ever since then... It just adds a lot of depth, and it's not that hard to do. All it is is I've just programmed the hi-hat on every other 16th note, and then I have an auto pan on there. And then it's just set to 3 8 so that's the other thing, is that you're kind of getting a polyrhythm. With the panning, if that makes any sense, so it's adding a lot of depth. Because it's not just happening, like, in a predictable way. It's very random, or it feels random, because it's not happening in the same predictable way that everything else is happening. Uh, yeah, and then on the group of hi-hats, we just have a little bit of saturation and a high-pass filter. So just kind of gluing them all together, fattening them up a bit, and then cutting out the lows and making sure that there's not going to be any low and getting in the way of the bass or the kick in the track. Here's without this processing. And then with it. So you can hear what that's doing, like it's just giving it that extra little bit of a boost to make it really stand out in the track. You'll notice like if I play the whole mix, 
without the saturation. And then with it. It's not even that the hi-hats sound necessarily fatter. It's just like without it, they don't fit in the mix. With it, they fit really nicely into the mix. And yeah, so. Listen here for this one, guys. That loop sounds really cool. I like that. But yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. Everything from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, everybody. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support lately, all the nice comments, all the love. Everybody's been buying my sample packs and supporting me in that way as well. All the love on my tracks as well and the support they've been getting is overwhelming. And I love you guys so much. And yeah, so thank you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.